I came to Enoch as our last chance, a chance at a new home. But what we found didn't save humanity. It consumed it. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, it seems every few days a brand new video game is announced from a AAA company. And for most people, most of these games will just fly by the wayside, not getting noticed. But once in a while, it is worth stopping to take a slightly closer look at a game. And today, my vivacious viewers, that game is Outriders, a new looter shooter RPG being developed for next-gen consoles, current-gen consoles, and PC. Set in a bit of a science fiction setting, don't be fooled by the aesthetics or the description though, this is not a Destiny 2 clone, or honestly, even trying to fit the same market, really. This game isn't an MMO. It's a third-person shooter action RPG with a heavy co-op focus and an endgame. The devs of this game are People Can Fly, the same studio behind Gears of War Judgment and Bulletstorm. So it's safe to say that they know how to make shooting mechanics fun, and so far all reports that I've seen from people who've actually gone hands-on with the game confirm as much. So the Earth goes to shit. We need to find a new home. We take a journey to a new planet, and what do we find but, of course, evil death magic. The player gets infested with said magic, gets stuck in a cryotube for about 30 years, and wakes up fresh as a daisy with some crazy magical powers of your choice. I'm magic. I can do anything. Yes, the magical powers are of your choice, and it is based around a class system with four classes planned to be available at launch. However, in the gameplay that we've seen so far, there have only been three, and the developers have been quite tight-lipped about the fourth. That said, the three that we know about fit very well into classic fantasy archetypes, just with a science fiction space shooter type of flair to it. There is the Devastator, who closely fits the classic tank warrior role, meant to get up in the enemy's grill and take a lot of hits while dishing out damage with their fancy geomancy. That's right, they get Earth Magic. Earth Magic isn't done enough in games, so that's already a point in the win column as far as I'm concerned. Then there is the Trickster, who loosely fits the rogue archetype by taking advantage of time and space magic. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. And I don't want to start sounding like a broken record here, but every single skill that I've seen so far looks both fantastic and fun. The way that the trickster gets to mess with time, slowing fields of enemies, and appearing behind their prey, it just seems like such an interesting and creative way to achieve a very classic sort of character archetype. And I love that. And then there is the pyromancer, who does pretty much what he says on the tin. The most classic wizard of the group, this class likes to stay a bit further away than the others and has some pretty badass lava and fire fire-based skills that just absolutely wreck the enemy. The game is playable in three-player co-op, and from what I've seen so far, the most interesting way to play will 100% be having three-player co-op with three different classes together, as there's a lot of potential for synergy between the classes. The worlds are relatively linear as opposed to a properly open-world experience with a few hubs along the way, and the way that the game does difficulty is actually really interesting in that regard. Each world has its own sort of counter, its own level, called a world tier. The higher the tier, the harder the fights. But what is interesting about this is that the world tiers change as you spend time on a planet and kill things. If you're having too much of an easy time, the game will pump it up, raise the world tier, and send some stronger enemies your way. The main increase for co-op as a whole for difficulty seems to be that enemies just have more health, but the world tiers are of course still in effect here, though they move at a slower pace than solo due to there being more variance in a group of three than as a single person. What about the story? As far as the story and campaign itself, the player character is not a mute, but by any means, it actually has full-on conversation options, though it has been confirmed that this doesn't change the story at all, and as far as length goes, the devs have marked it at around 40 hours to complete depending on how invested in side quests you are, though they've also stated that they do have plans for some sort of endgame. Not like what it is though, or how big it'll be, or anything even remotely close to that, so any endgame speculation would be exactly that, speculation. That said, my speculation, given the gameplay that we have in front of us and the information that we've been given, is something along the lines of dungeons that require a full three-player group with unique story experiences and harder enemies. The game has just far too much depth to be less than that in my opinion, though it could possibly be more. I mean, the individual weapons are customizable to the point that they come with such unique mods as Bone Shrapnel, which makes it so killing an enemy makes them deal a burst of AoE damage to anyone around them. And just how deep the skill system itself looks as well, it seems to me it would just be a waste to not do much with the end 
game with a system that has this much potential to grow and allow your characters to reach unbelievable levels of power, and more than that, levels of customization. In theory, the game is designed in a way that far enough down the line, you can be so customized that one person on your squad can be a total action hero, standing a foot from the face of their opponent while another squad member is playing a cover shooter, sitting behind rocks and rattling off shots and skills from a distance. Even though there's nothing inherently in the game's mechanics to force either of these players or classes to necessarily fight this way, it is a system built around choice, and basically just letting you do whatever makes you happy. I'll do this with my hands. And the last specific thing that I really want to focus on is the idea of boss mechanics in this game. Again, what we actually have is quite limited, with it being approximated at merely 5% of the full game experience, but the few early mini-bosses and bosses that I've seen combat of look very interesting. Specifically, there was one with a basic mechanic where a flame tornado just sort of follows you around the battlefield, which first off is just gorgeous, but also I love that this messes with the idea of your character. If you build yourself to be a cover shooter, this fight takes you out of that comfort zone completely and immediately. And while this is an incredibly small sample size, it shows me that the devs at least have some interesting ideas afoot when it comes to boss mechanics, and really cool ways to implement them in the setting of a third person shooter, and it gives me high hopes for what we'll see a bit further into the experience. All in all then, Outriders is a PvE third person looter shooter RPG with a focus on three player co-op through a relatively linear story with an as of yet unknown end game. It is gory, it is fast paced, and the developers pride themselves on the amount of sheer choice and variation there is in the combat system. It's definitely a touch too early to make any definitive statements on the quality of the game, but to me, it looks promising, and I'll definitely be keeping an eye on it over the next few months. Outriders is scheduled to release for both next-gen and current-gen consoles as well as PC this coming holiday season. Alright everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been everything that you need to know about Outriders. Are you excited for this game? Which class attracts you the most? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love, so let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, we make a bunch of jokes that are kinda lame. And when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here, talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.